welcome to this presentation the topic of the presentation today is introduction to ICH GCP everybody who is directly or indirectly participating in clinical trial should be well versed with the ICH GCP guidelines so that the conduct of the study is more ethical and data which is generated from clinical trial is accepted globally. The outline of my presentation will be as follows. I will start with some important definition which are commonly used in ICH GCP. Then briefly I will describe some of the important historical events which led to the formulation of ICH GCP guideline. Then I will cover the concept of GCP. This will be followed by the detailed description of the purpose and objective of ICH GCP guidelines. Next, I will be covering the elements of ICH GCP. This elements will be followed by golden rules of GCP. Then the next part of my talk will cover the progress of guidelines and finally at the end of my presentation I will conclude the topic of ICH GCP. Considering few general questions will help us in better understanding of ICH GCP guidelines for conducting clinical research. These general questions are what is ICH, what does it do, what is GCP and what it is for and why should we implement GCP in carrying out the clinical trials in human subject. The term ICH stands for International Conference on Harmonization while the GCP stands for good clinical practices. The ICH is the International Conference on Harmonization of the Technical Requirements for the Registration of the Pharmaceuticals for Human Use. And GCP is the Good Clinical Practices Guideline which are agreed at these conferences time to time. Coming to the definition, the ICH definition of GCP is it is a standard for the design conduct, performance, monitoring, auditing, recording, analyzing and reporting of clinical trial that provides assurance that the data and reported results are credible and accurate. 
and that the right integrity and confidentiality of clinical trial participants are protected this is given in ICH section E6 1.24 coming to a brief history of GCP in early 1960s there was a widespread concern about the safety and control of investigational drug and the process of clinical research amongst the member of medical professions, the scientific community, regulatory authorities and amongst the general public. Subsequently, in year 1968, World Health Organization has convened a scientific group meeting on principles of clinical drug evaluation and the scientific group was charged with reviewing and formulating the principles for the clinical drug development of the various products. In 1975, there was another WHO scientific group meeting which was especially considering all the aspects of the evaluation of testing of drugs and to finally formulate a proposal and develop various guidelines for clinical research in the field of drug development. In year 1980, the European Union started harmonization of the regulatory requirement of drug development amongst the member countries which are there in European Union. First time in year 1989, World Health Organization invited a conference of drug regulatory authorities in Paris and started the harmonization process between Europe, United States and Japan. The first meeting of International Conference on Harmonization was held in Brussels in April 1990. Then subsequently there were biennial meetings which were held in different places in the world. In 1991 it held in Brussels. Orlando, it was held in 1993. In 1995, it was held in Japan. Again, it was held in Brussels in 1997. And in 2000, it was held in San Diego in United States. The Indian GCP was developed in year 2001 and subsequently it was amended and made law in year 2005. Coming to the aim of developing ICH GCP guidelines, it is mainly aimed to develop an international ethical and 
scientific quality standard for designing conducting recording and reporting of clinical trial which involves the participation of human subject secondly it provide public assurance that the right safety and well being of clinical trial subjects are well protected during the clinical trial it is consistent with declaration of helsinki and the results which are obtained by the clinical trial which is conducted as per icih gcp guidelines provides a credible data which is accurate the declaration of helsinki will be covered in the latter part of this talk now let us see what is declaration of helsinki actually this is one of the very very important landmark event which led to the development of various guidelines especially to protect the well being and safety of human subjects those who are participating in a clinical trial in 1964 june it was first adopted then there were subsequent amendment which was held in tokyo 1975 in 1983 there was amendment which was held in the meeting in venice 1989 in hong kong meeting there was another amendment 1996 it was in south africa the amendment which was done in year 2000 in the meeting which was held in scotland united kingdom contributed in very significant principles to declaration of helsinki and then there was another amendment in year 2004 after the meeting which was held in tokyo as i said in the previous slide that there were different amendment and the amendment which was done after the meeting which was held in scotland in year 2000 there was significant principles added to declaration of helsinki these principles are first that the clinical trial protocol must be made public and all the results which are obtained after completion of clinical trial should also be made available to the public then if clinical trial is conducted the suitable comparator product should be preferred as compared to placebo then the best treatment which is identified at the end of the study to be given to all the study participant after the study is completed then at the meeting which was held in tokyo in 2004 additional principles 
were added to declaration of helsinki this included number 1 it is necessary during the study planning process to identify the post trial access by the study participant to the prophylactic diagnostic or therapeutic procedure identified as beneficial useful and effective in the study or other appropriate care second the post clinical trial access arrangement or other care must be described in the study protocol which is submitted to ethics committee for review so that the members of ethics committee may consider such arrangement during the review of the protocol coming to another very important landmark event that is belmont report which was prepared in year 1979 which again significantly contributed to the development of ethical principles and guidelines for the protection of human subjects participating in clinical research the belmont report has got three important principle number 1 is autonomy that is the respect for the person who is participating in clinical trial second is beneficence and the third is the justice the first ethical principle of belmont report is respect for the clinical trial participant during the study each participant should be considered as autonomous individual and he or she will be having free choice to participate or not to participate in a particular clinical trial those individuals having a diminished autonomy they are also known as vulnerable participant must be protected and their interest has to be safeguard in a clinical trial the second principle is beneficence the study participants must not be exposed to any harmful effect of the investigational product during the conduct of clinical trial do no harm secondly the researcher must try to maximize the possible benefit of a particular clinical trial while try to reduce as much as possible the risk to the clinical trial participants the last principle of belmont report is justice neither the wealth nor the poverty should be reason for selecting any trial participant into the clinical trial or 
excluding them from the clinical trial who are likely to get benefit by participating into particular clinical research subject must not be selected solely by their easy availability compromise position manipulability or reasons other than those which are directly related to the research there should not be any type of inducement for attracting or including the patient into a clinical trial coming to the purpose of ICH it is aimed to produce a single set of technical requirement for the registration of new drug product to streamline its development second purpose is to reduce or obviate the duplicate testing third purpose is have a more economical use of human subject animal and other material resources for conducting clinical trial and the last purpose is to eliminate unnecessary delay in the availability of new medicine to the population of various countries those who are following the ICH GCP guideline the main purpose of ICH GCP guideline to harmonize the regulation and guidelines for drug development process by the member countries regulatory agencies of member countries industry representatives from europe japan united states who canada nordics group and australia they participate in a proceedings of ICH GCP all these country they follow a common ICH GCP guideline for conducting clinical trial hence if drug is developed in one country other member countries can introduce the drug into their market this help in early introduction of these drugs in various country and prevent the duplication of clinical trial in other country the goal of ICH GCP guidelines to provide a unified standard to facilitate the mutual acceptance of clinical trial data by the regulatory authorities of all the members country who follow the ICH GCP guidelines for their clinical trial and drug development process the other goal is to remove the redundancy or to prevent the duplication in the development and review process by the other countries this slide shows the diagrammatic representation of the concept of good clinical practice
which is an international scientific and ethical equality standard for conducting clinical trial this includes design of the study recording of the data collection of the data and reporting the result of clinical trial this concept of gcp is based on two important issues one is the safety and well being of the clinical trial participants that is the patients second the collection of data which is credible and accurate at the end of the trial coming to the designing standards of good clinical practice the standards include in writing the clinical trial protocol preparation of investigator brochure we should include in detail and the complete information available on the investigator product the designing should be very scientific and with good soundness it should also look into the feasibility of conducting a particular trial designing should include the adequate resources in the form of patient population trained man power and other material to conduct a clinical trial at a particular site the protocol designing should include the procedure of randomization and or blinding of the study so that the data which is collected will be free from bias coming to gcp conduct standard it includes number 1 that every clinical trial protocol has to be approved by institutional review board and as the case may be from the regulatory authorities of a particular country clinical trial protocol should be strictly compliant as per the written procedures in protocol informed consent is one of the very important part and issue in conducting clinical trial every participant who is enrolled in a clinical trial must give informed consent before any trial related procedure except if there is a exemption for getting informed consent has been received from irb and regulatory authorities confidentiality of data of a clinical trial is another important issue and in every respect the data should be kept confidential and the identity of a particular clinical trial part participant should not be revealed to anybody except those who are authorized to go through the data in case of development of any adverse event it has to be medically managed effectively and in a timely manner by the medical team available at the clinical trial site one of the important issue in conducting clinical trial is the product accountability it has to be strictly followed and 
the amount of drug which is used by the investigational site must be accounted in a proper manner and must be recorded in a accountability log qualified and the trained personnel are very important to conduct clinical trial hence those who are trained and qualified to conduct a clinical trial should only be included at a clinical trial site the third standard is of recording the clinical trial data the case record form completion has to be done properly as per the written procedure of clinical trial and the case record form should be completed in a timely manner the correction of the data should be done on crf as per the guideline of good clinical practice as the confidentiality is very important the data handling also should be done very meticulously during the clinical trial the maintenance of security of the data is important hence that all the case record form and the document should be kept in a very secure place and only the authorized person should be access to these data recording standard should also include the audit requirements because there is a possibility that the clinical trial at particular site may be audited by the sponsor or by the regulatory authorities as i mentioned already that the product accountability is one of the very important consideration and all the product which is used or sent back to the sponsor should be mentioned in a log of product accountability study site should properly manage all the documents and various file files and essential documents at the site as per the guidelines of good clinical practice there are many essential documents which are required before the start of clinical trial during the clinical trial and at the end of the clinical trial all of them should be recorded properly and kept at the clinical trial site for the future reference now coming to the reporting standards during conduct of clinical trial all the adverse event the interim review regular progress reports final reports as well as the reports of monitoring and audit has to be reported to the sponsor institutional review board or institutional ethics committee regulatory authorities and also to the other investigators those who are participating in same clinical trial who are responsible for good clinical practices during the conduct of clinical trial the responsibility for 
GCP is shared by all of the parties or stakeholders, those who are involved in clinical trial. This includes the sponsor, investigator and the other members of clinical trial at site. If there is a contract related organization, they also are responsible to follow good clinical practice. Institutional ethics committee or review board at the site of clinical trial. The regulatory authorities of that country has to follow good clinical practice in reviewing or looking into the other aspects of clinical trial. Then even the clinical trial research participants, that is the patients, those who are participating in a clinical trial, they are also responsible for following good clinical practice guidelines as per the protocol and the instructions given to them by the site clinical trial members time to time. The process of ICH GCP includes the development of guidelines those who are applicable for drugs, biologicals and medical devices. These processes have to be approved by ICH members of those countries and should be adopted by the national regulatory authorities of all the member countries, those who are following ICH GCP guidelines. The guidelines and other regulations covered under ICH GCP focus on three main areas. These include number one, the safety of the investigational product which is studied during the preclinical experimental development stage of the product which includes the studies conducted in experimental animals as well as the in vitro studies. The second area is efficacy, which is the part where the clinical research is conducted with the investigational product which includes all the phases of clinical trial and the last area is of quality which includes the quality of the investigational product which is tested in a particular clinical trial. This slide shows the various elements which are covered under the guidelines of ICH GCP. It includes sponsor, investigator, institutional ethics committee or institutional review board 
clinical trial protocol and various amendments investigator brochure and all other essential documents which are listed in the gcp guidelines for conduct of a clinical trial the regulation and guidelines of gcp is a shared responsibility among sponsor monitor and clinical trial investigator and all of them individually and jointly focus on the safety and protection of clinical trial participants right and welfare there are 13 important principles of good clinical practice which includes number 1 all the studies must be conducted in accordance with declaration of helsinki and must be consistent with gcp and other regulatory requirements of that particular country the studies should be initiated and continued only if the anticipated benefits overweigh the risk if the benefit is less as compared to the risk to the clinical trial participant studies should be discontinued third principle is that rights safety and welfare of human subjects those who are taking part in a clinical trial takes a priority over the interest of science and society that means the safety of clinical trial participant is of paramount importance fourth is that the available non clinical and clinical information on the investigative products are adequate to support the conduct of clinical trial that means the data that is preclinical and clinical data should be sufficient to propose a clinical trial with that investigational product continuing with the remaining principles the next principle is that all the clinical trial studies those are proposed must have a very scientific background and in protocol which is submitted for the approval of the regulatory authorities and the institutional review board should in detail clearly described every aspects of the clinical trial as per the guidelines for preparing clinical trial protocols the next principle is that the studies must be compliance with the institutional review board approved protocol only it is the responsibility of the qualified medical profession those who are at the clinical trial site to give the medical care to the clinical trial participant the individuals those who are involved in 
conduct of clinical trial at the site all of them must be qualified by their education training and experience to conduct a particular clinical trial at the site the ninth principle is very important which includes that the all trial participant should provide a freely given informed consent before initiation of any trial related activity the 10th principle includes that at most care should be taken during the recording of study information handling of the data and the storage of the data so that it allows the accurate reporting interpretation and if necessary the verification of clinical trial data by the authorized persons the confidentiality of the clinical trial subject is very important and it has to be protected in accordance with the applicable regulatory requirements of the particular country the investigational product which are tested in a clinical trial should be manufactured handled and stored in accordance with good clinical practice and used in accordance to the particularly approved protocol only all the systems and procedures which are implemented should assure the quality of the study so that the data at the end of the trial is credible and accurate for the review and interpretation there are 12 golden gcp rules for investigator first the investigator at site should thoroughly know the study protocol and should follow the study procedure as per the protocol which was approved by the institutional ethics committee <coughs> he or she is responsible to select and train the suitable study personnel at the clinical trial site and mention the delegation of the activity of each and every study personnel in a log data recording on to the case record form or source document or essential documents has to be done very carefully and investigator should oversee that the data entry is done properly and in a timely manner <coughs> at clinical trial site equipments are required to conduct the clinical trial investigator should ensure that all the equipment necessary are in adequate number and all of them are functioning normally one of the important issue in conduct of clinical trial is protection of the trial participant investigator has to maximize the 
protection of trial subject and see that no undue harm is done to them during the clinical trial it is also very important for the investigator to accurately predict the number of trial patients which are available at his or her site to be enrolled in a clinical trial and the trial participants information has to be documented in a log for the recruitment product accountability is the responsibility of investigator and he should see that the study personnel especially the pharmacist meticulously documents the use or the dispensing of the product to suitable patients only in a log timely and efficiently informing the incidence of adverse drug reaction or serious adverse report to sponsor and to the ethics committee is also one of the important requirement for the investigator evaluation of the lab data should be done to ensure that the lab investigation reports are of good quality and are accurate maintenance of all the trial related files and other documents are important and they should be archived in a particular secured place hence during the trial or after the completion of the trial that can be reviewed by the regulatory authorities or other authorized person one of the important gcp requirement is the data quality and investigator must do as much as possible towards the maximizing the quality of data and finally the investigator should keep everyone fully informed including the each and every study personnel sponsor ethics committee members and even the other investigator participating in a same clinical trial now let us see in more elaborate way what are actually the good clinical practices guidelines these are series of regulations guidelines and industry standard that provide oversight to the conduct of clinical trial in human subject which is pertaining to one the review of the studies number 2 the conduct of the studies third is the record keeping fourth is the informed consent of clinical trial participants fifth is analysis of data and the last that is sixth is submission of the information to the regulatory authorities and other authorized persons the components of ich gcp they are grouped under 11 groups which includes number 1 extent of population exposure number 2 the clinical safety data management third is the structure and the content of clinical trial reports fourth is the dose response data fifth is ethnicity in clinical trial 
सिक्स्थ इज द पार्ट सिक्स गुड क्लिनिकल प्रैक्टिस गाइडलाइंस सेवंथ इज इवेल्युएशन ऑफ ड्रग्स फॉर यूज इन जीडाटिक पॉपुलेशन जनरल कंट्रीब्यूशन इज ग्रुप्ड अंडर एथ ग्रुप नाइन्थ इज द स्टैटिस्टिक्स टेंथ इज द पीरियड रिव्यूज ऑफ सेफ्टी डेटा फॉर मार्केटेड प्रोडक्ट विच इज ऑल्सो नोन एज फार्मोको विजिलेंस एंड लास्ट दैट लेवेंथ इज द इवेल्युएशन ऑफ ड्रग्स फॉर द यूज इन चिल्ड्रन और पीडाटिक पॉपुलेशन now coming to the part 6 of gcp guidelines which are important for today's topic to understand it actually provides two important assurance number 1 application of gcp guidelines for conducting clinical trial provide that the right safety and well being of trial subjects are protected by the principle of declaration of health in key this is covered under ich gcp 2.1 and 2.3 the second assurance which is covered is that the data which are generated after the clinical trial are credible and thus they are acceptable for mutual acceptance for all the regulatory authorities of various country those who follow the icih gcp guideline for conducting clinical trial in their respective countries this is covered under icih gcp 2.10 the icih topics for gcp are divided into four category first is the safety which is denoted by capital letter s which includes the in vitro and in vivo preclinical testing which is mostly conducted on experimental animals and isolated tissues and sometime on cells the second topic is topic of quality c which is denoted by the, the investigation capital letter q carried out in the lab which covers the quality of then properly chemical and and the pharmaceutical the data quality is which is used Good. for the production of the investigational product and development of the formulation for the clinical trial the third topic is of efficacy denoted by capital letter e which covers all the clinical studies conducted in human subject which usually include phase 1 phase 2 phase 3 and phase 4 clinical trial the last topic is multidisciplinary which is denoted by letter m which covers the various terminologies used in clinical trial electronic standards and some of the common documents which are used for conducting clinical trial there are 37 guidelines which are produced and distributed in four categories first is the quality for which there are 17 guidelines which are related to 
the quality of chemicals and pharmaceuticals as per gcp they have to be produced under good manufacturing practices the second category is of safety which includes 14 guidelines which are related to in vivo and in vitro preclinical studies the third topic is of efficacy which is related to the clinical research in human participants it includes total 14 guidelines they are further divided into e2 clinical safety e5 ethnic factor e6 good clinical practice e7 special populations and e8 that is clinical trial design the last ich topic is multidisciplinary which contains four guidelines first is the medical terminology which includes the medical dictionary for regulatory activities terminology electronic standard for transmission of regulatory information timing of preclinical studies in relation to the clinical trial and then there are common technical documents which are regularly updated time to time now let us see why the industry is interested in following the good clinical practice guidelines for developing new drugs it helps them to reduce the development time and the cost of developing new drug it is easier for them to simultaneously submit the data of drug development to many countries all the country those who are member of icsc gcp they accept the data from their member country and third that it facilitate the intra company globalization for conducting clinical trial who must comply with gcp all the individuals those directly or indirectly involved in any aspects of clinical trial they must be suitably qualified and trained to be able to comply with good clinical practice sponsor clinical investigators they are responsible for ensuring that all the staff those who are engaged in conducting a particular clinical trial are able to comply with gcp and it is the responsibility of sponsor and the investigator to train every team member for good clinical practice application coming to the concluding remark on this presentation we have learned what is good clinical practice it is a ethical and scientific quality standard 
for designing, conducting, recording and reporting trials that involve the participation of human subjects. Number two, why it is needed? It is needed for two important issues. Number one, to ensure that the right safety and well-being of clinical trial participants are protected during the conduct of clinical trial. And number two, it ensure that the data which is generated from clinical trial is credible and accepted globally. Why has it developed into formal guidelines? Because previously there was public disasters, serious frauds and abuse of human rights in conducting clinical trials by sponsors and the investigators. What are the values for following GCP guidelines? At the site where the clinical investigator follow the good clinical practice guidelines for conducting their clinical trial, it is appreciated by everybody and more and more clinical trials are available for that site and investigator. Second, it avoids the legal problems which are sometime generated during the clinical trial. And third, actually it avoids the more number of queries or denial of regulatory sanction for introducing the new drug into the market. The regulations are different from guidelines. Regulation tell us what we are required to do by law, whereas the guidelines tell us the best way to do it. Always remember that good clinical practice is not a wallpaper you should paste over your clinical development site. But GCP is to be built into the structure of conducting clinical trial and should be practiced throughout the conduct of clinical trial. The final take home message is that the following of good clinical practice guidelines during conduct of clinical trial provides number one safety to the clinical trial participants and it prevents the undue harm to the trial participant during the clinical trial and number two it helps in generating the quality data which is credible and accurate and is accepted globally by the regulatory authorities. I hope this lecture may be helpful for understanding the concept of good clinical practices which are very important for conducting the ethical clinical trials. Thanks. Next, let us have the quiz. Now coming to the quiz on the topic just now we have covered that is 
introduction to ICH GCP. The first question is expand the term ICH and GCP. The answer is ICH stands for International Conference on Harmonization while GCP stands for Good Clinical Practices. Question number two, what is ICH definition of good clinical practice? The answer is the definition of GCP as per ICH is a standard for the design, conduct, performance, monitoring, auditing, recording, analyzing and reporting of clinical trial that provides assurance that the data and reported results are credible and accurate and that the rights, integrity and confidentiality of trial participants are protected. This is covered under ICH E6 1.24. The third question is World Health Organization in year 1989 harmonized the regulatory authorities between which countries? In year 1989, WHO Conference of Drug Regulatory Authorities, which was held in Paris, first time started the harmonization process between three countries. One is countries from Europe, United States and Japan. The fourth question is, what is declaration of Helsinki and when it was first adopted, that means in which year it was adopted first time. The declaration of Helsinki is one of the landmark event in the history of development of good clinical practice guidelines. It is the ethical principles for the medical research involving human subject and it was first adopted in June 64 
and then there were subsequent amendments. The next question, question number five, what new principles were added in declaration of Helsinki after the Scotland amendment which was done in year 2000? There are four new principles which are very significant were added to declaration of Helsinki after the amendment carried out in Scotland year 2000. That is number one, the clinical trial protocol to be made public the result of a clinical trial also to be made public and the comparator product should be used as a standard treatment which should be preferred to placebo and last was that the best treatment which is identified by study to be given to all study participants after the studies completed. Question number six, what is Belmont report? In which year it was proposed? And what are three main principles of Belmont report? The Belmont report is another landmark event in the development of good clinical practices guidelines. It was proposed in year 1979 which covers the three important principles. Number one, autonomy that is respect of person number two beneficence and number three justice question number seven who are responsible to follow the good clinical practice guidelines for conducting clinical trial. To comply with good clinical practice guidelines is the responsibility of all the parties, those who are directly or indirectly involved in clinical trial, which includes sponsors, clinical investigator and all the members at the clinical trial site. 
contract this organization if it is engaged for a clinical trial ethics committee regulatory authorities and even the clinical trial research participants that means patients क्वेश्चन नंबर एट आई सी हेच जी सी पी फोकस ऑन विच मेन एरियाज ICH GCP guidelines they focus on three main areas number 1 safety that is a preclinical studies conducted in experimental animals second is efficacy which covers the clinical research all phases of clinical trial and third is the quality of the investigational product used for clinical trial question number 9 what are the various elements which are covered under ich gcp guidelines the answer is there are six main elements which are covered under ich gcp guidelines which include sponsor clinical investigator ethics committee or institutional review board clinical trial protocol and all the amendments investigator brochure which contains the detailed information about the clinical trial product then there are essential documents for the conduct of clinical trial this is actually question number 10 good clinical practice guidelines 
is a shared responsibility between whom and what for it is so amongst whom the gcp responsibility is shared and what is the main indication of following gcp clinical practice guideline is a shared responsibility between sponsor monitor and investigator and it is aimed for two important things number 1 is the safety of the clinical trial participant and protection of participants right and well being question number 11 what are good clinical practices the good clinical practice are actually series of regulations guidelines and industry standard that provide the oversight to conduct the clinical trial in human subject which is pertaining to number 1 the review of the studies second the conduct of the studies third is record keeping fourth is obtaining the informed consent of all clinical trial participants analysis of data and last is the regulation covering the submission of information to regulatory authorities question number 12 what are the two main aims of ich gcp as per the part 6 of gcp guidelines the two important component of ich gcp as per part 6 of gcp guidelines includes number 1 which provides the public assurance that the right safety and well being of clinical trial subjects are protected by the principle of the declaration of helsinki covered under ich gcp 2.1 and 2.3 the second is that the trial data which is obtained in a clinical trial is credible and thus acceptable for mutual acceptance by the regulatory authorities of all those countries which follow the guidelines 
which is developed jointly. This is covered under ICH GCP 2.10. What are the four ICH topics? The four ICH topics are safety, denoted as letter S. which covers the in vitro and in vivo preclinical testing mainly done in animal experiments second quality denoted as q where the quality of chemicals and the pharmaceutical formulation is covered third is efficacy denoted by letter e covers all the phases of clinical trial in human subjects and the fourth one is the multidisciplinary which is denoted by letter m covers terminology electronic standards and some of the common documents used during the clinical trial the next question is what are the importance of following icih gcp for the industry there are three major importance for industry to follow icih gcp guideline number 1 it reduces the development time and the cost of developing new drug it is easier for them to simultaneously submit the data for approval to many member countries and third that it facilitate the intra company globalization i hope you have enjoyed the presentation and the question answers